Indigenous camps originated back in 2000 when uh, Michael Long and a few of the players uh, decided to get all the boys together um, in, the, in conjunction with the Players Association to get the guys to come together and trying to celebrate the boys being involved. And I think at that time they had about 40 players in the AFL, so at, at that time it was a large number. What's the objectives of these camps? Probably the main objective is to get the players together. A lot of the players don't get to come together because they're spread out all over the country. So getting the players in one location uh, for a pe period of time is great for the players to uh, really get to know each other, unite and uh, share experiences. But also on the other side when we're d doing uh, our workshops, uh, giving them some experience and some knowledge about different issues uh, outside of footy. You might have one, you might have a number. Usually a person has one. However, it's not enough to just have a vision. You have to set some goals. How important, Adam, do you think these camps are for Indigenous players? Oh, it's super important. You know, we've got so many young fellas in the team now and they're all very shy and, you know, very much inward. So it's good for us to spend a whole week up here to really, you know, break them out of their shells. We're doing an um, indig Indigenous leadership program the first three days, which um, the first day and a half have been fantastic. I've gotten a lot out of it and it, you can really see the, the younger kids coming out of their shell and you know really approaching some of us older guys to, to, to find out a bit of knowledge about ourselves and, and, and the game. Is there any unique issues that Indigenous players face that may be perhaps different to some of the mainstream players? Oh definitely, moving away from home is a big one. I think what the camp does um, this week is you know the WA boys who play in Perth can actually get to mingle together and then hopefully join um, you know, swap numbers and create a little network, especially if they don't come from WA and they're coming from Melbourne, it's a long way from home, so they can you know, start these little networks and friendships that they can use during the football season and after the football season. Same in Melbourne and Adelaide. Um, for players that are you know, a long way from home, living in those states, that they can form um, you know, certain relationships um, with other players at other football clubs and have, have that friendship. Because I know in my first couple of seasons at the, um, in Sydney, if I didn't have Mikko Lachlan, Robbie Armat and Troy Cook there, it would have been really hard for me to really cope with uh, being away from home. With all these initiatives that the AFL have introduced, like these draft camps, the All-Stars game against Adelaide Crows, do you think that players now have much have a better chance of being successful within the AFL football scene? I think they've got a better roadmap to be successful. They've seen a lot more brothers do it, and I think that's the best thing. Uh, it would have been hard, you know, 20 years ago, I'm sure if you had asked Mickey Long and Nicky Wimmer, you know, is it easy for a black fella to come through the ranks? But these days, there are a lot more of us doing it, um, and we're approachable, the guys can come up and talk to us they, and they want to come up and learn from us. I think that's the, the new generation of kids coming through these days. They, um, they, they do ask a lot of questions and I think that's um, really encouraging, especially for our Indigenous boys as well.